Hello and a warm welcome to Talking Stocks. I'm Kukule Tukele. In studio with me, I have Sean Ashton and Brian Rudd, both from Anchor Capital, and our experts today as we talk about a stock by the name of Priceline Group with $50.3 billion in gross bookings recorded in 2014. The company claims to be the world leader in online travel and related services. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us today. I think when we often think about this company, maybe uh, many South African consumers might not be familiar with it, but travel, surely there's a huge opportunity here. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So, I mean, some of the brands that you may or may not be aware of is Agoda.com uh, and Booking.com, which is really a booking engine for, for accommodation services around the world. I think the, the real attraction of this business model is that it, it plays into a very, very dominant theme that I think is playing out around the world, and that is of the disintermediation of, uh, of land-based travel agents globally. Mm. So if you're booking air tickets, if you're booking hotel accommodation, car rental, etc., uh, you might have previously gone through an agent. Now you're probably going onto the web, onto the internet and, and searching for that stuff yourself. And these guys are a primary provider of that of that service. This is a unique pos positioning given the competition competitive landscape, as you mentioned. We've got the likes of Airbnb trying to do their own thing, uh, and other traditional means like agencies and even airlines offering these bolt-on services. Now, Brian, you know, it's it's one of those things. Priceline kind of brings it all together. So you can go onto Bookings.com and you can go through the entire range of your entire trip through one website. Um, they also then have Kayak, which is a comparison. These guys are the big daddy. They have scale, they have size, they have reach. So for them, they really are in that dominant position of they can go and buy the best keywords. If somebody wants to go travel or airline, you might find that a company like SAA or BA or even Emirates might not even be the top line item because these guys have the money to go and buy it. And that's where a lot of their expense is online advertising, buying keywords, buying names. So there's a lot of competition out there, and but people doing niche bits. So you can go and get your ticket here, and the, these guys bring it together. Speaking about being the big daddy in the industry, you look at its market cap, and it's quite staggering. Well over 60 billion US dollars. Yeah. Sure. For pretty much an online presence. Um, they're a very big business. They have very little capital structure. They, they don't need it. They're an online player. Um, so. Big business, um, as we say, they're, they're relatively attractively priced at the moment. If we look at the multiples from a, a, f a Ford 27, um, or sorry, trailing 25 um, going forward, much more attractively priced. Not too much from a, a, there is no yield on the play. They reinvest everything they've got there, um, but definitely rewards shareholders with a, a great uh, return on equity. Mm -hmm. To pick up on some of those metrics that you've highlighted, to me it sounds as though it's quite an expensive stock. Uh, just looking at the share price, well over what, $1,000 a piece uh, from a South African perspective? $1,100, it's close to 15000 rand a share. That's a lot of money. Um, it's <laughs> a lot of money for an individual share and it might yeah. limit liquidity for individual holders. Obviously if you own it via a fund then that's less of an issue. Um, but obviously you mustn't think of expensiveness in, in the sense of the price of the share, because that's mm. just a denomination issue. Mm. They, could, uh, you know, they could split their shares by, by 10 times and bring the price of the share down by 10 times, but then obviously you, um, or down to a tenth, but then you, you know, the, the, the pie has just been sliced up into, into a larger number of pieces. It hasn't necessarily grown. Um, but I think just to touch on a point that Brian said earlier with respect to market share, which is important. So these guys are the biggest, and I think it's important to understand that in the online space, Scale is important and size begets size. Because the, the biggest expense, as you mentioned, more than 50% of expenses is, is advertising, of which that's largely online. And that's really about paying people like Google to actually uh, yeah, place your, when, you, when people go online and they search for a keyword relating to travel, um, you know, many online providers will actually, and, and, and companies will, will, will bid to have their words placed near the top, and top of the front page mm. on, on that Google landing page. And obviously the bigger you are, the bigger checkbook you have to, to, to pay for that advertising, and that's their biggest cost. So it'd be quite hard for a smaller player to come in and unseat somebody like a, um, a Booking.com or Priceline from that perspective, it'd be hard for them to get onto the page. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to touch on the revenue split because uh, I know that there's a pie chart there and it seems as though it's a split between agencies, merchant and uh, some of that online advertising that you mentioned. Well, it's, you know, we go and look at the revenue mix. The online advertising is a very small portion. Mm -hmm. It's growing um, and that's pretty much where they've got these dominant sites that they've paid to get to the top of the page where they're now letting someone else go and put an ad on that. Then they've majority of the revenue is two splits where they've got the agency and the merchant. The merchant is pretty much where Priceline controls it. They control the product or the, 
the package that's on offer, the price at which it's um, marked. The other side, the agency, which is the predominantly the biggest, is where they are literally just taking a percentage and a commission on top of the, the product itself and the package. So a third party has created the package, made it available through them. They've then gone and put a little bit of a markup on the top, a bit of a commission, and that's where they're pulling the revenue from. Mm -hmm. So they've got the two ways of doing it. One, they're getting everybody else to do the hard work, and then they're doing it a little bit themselves, but they're making money out of the whole in the entire space. <laughs> It goes back to what Sean was saying about scale and size and just how big this company is. But uh, maybe if you look at how consistent uh, these uh, earnings are expected to be, if you look at the graph, it uh, looks very impressive. It's over been the last growing few at years. 30% a year for a number of years. Mm. And, and I think yeah, the, the most recent quarter has been somewhat less impressive. And you've actually seen the share price flattening out for a little while now. But I think that's not a case of <coughs> an underlying growth problem, it's more a currency issue. Where if you look at the, the construct of this business, it reports in US dollars, so it's an American company predominantly, but their business is predominantly outside of the States. So w the way they report is um, about 87% of their, of their gross profit is outside of America. So that's in currencies like the Euro, um, Asia Pacific currencies, etc. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> the, the dollar's obviously been very strong over the last 12 months versus, versus every currency, if you want to measure it that way. Um, and if you, if you look at their most recent numbers, if I can think off the top of my head, uh, booking, hotel bookings, for example, have been up 25% in terms of volume. So they're definitely gaining, gaining share from, from overall growth in, in bookings around the world. Um, and at the same time, their gross profit in, in constant currencies has been up 30% most recent quarter, but in US dollars, 15%. So clearly there's some dilution coming through, which is a risk for, for reported profits from, from currency weakness. Uh, but unless you think the dollar is going to strengthen forever and ever, um, it could well have some more to go. But it's 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 a trend that does that will will likely run its course at some point in time. That's that's not a yeah, that's a transitory issue. It's not necessarily a structural issue for for many many years. Mm -hmm. But we do think that the growth model is a structural growth model for for many years. Maybe if we can sidestep just a bit and look at the macroeconomic factors that might influence it. You mentioned obviously currency swings, but uh, are we seeing more areas, uh, or rather areas of growth, uh, like in Asia versus what we're seeing in Europe and the US Certainly. at the moment? Yeah. So I mean, they've actually they've invested into a business called C Trip, which I think they currently own about 11% of it, with an option to go up to about 60. Now that's the largest, uh, also online booking engine for for Chinese travel, both dom both domestically and and outbound out of China, mm -hmm. and that's a, that's a rapidly growing business. So that's probably the fastest uh, growing part of their business, but although they don't consolidate it, mm -hmm. it's an investment holding, uh, it's, an, it's an associate in their numbers. Yeah, it's one of those businesses that if we go and look back to, to the crisis, they were impacted because everybody didn't go anywhere. It, it became the staycation. As the markets have improved, as it was gone up, they've been the primary beneficiary. Now we've seen a little bit more of a, a recovery coming through in Europe and Asia. You know, the Asian markets have moved away from industrial to consumerism. Now the Chinese person wants to get out. Um, we recently had a colleague there and they were saying that the average Chinese tourist in Hawaii is spending $2,000 a day mm. outside of his hotel booking. So he's still, there's lots of people that want to get out and travel. So Asia is a very big, strong market for them, specifically coming through from China. Mm -hmm. Well, we've touched on uh, uh, the metrics, but I also want us to look at the historical PE just for a moment there, because it has also been quite volatile over the last uh, uh, few uh, years, as we could see by the graph on screen there. Uh, I take it, are there lessons to learn from that, or maybe just uh, typical of the company this size, you know, uh, I think, moving I think and shifting? growth stories, people, at, uh, you know, investors at points in time, when there's a high growth story, will tend to overpay for growth. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I think the PE multiple has been as high high as 60 and maybe even more. So obviously when, when ratings get very, very high, you can often have a period of consolidation where you know, growth comes through, the, the, you know, the growth and earnings comes through, but the share price does nothing for a while. And we've been in one of those phases for a while now where they've been delivering growth, but the share price has done nothing. So it's been derating a lot. I think part of that is a concern around currency exposure in the sense that they're very much non-US dollar in terms of the functional currencies. Um, and at the same time, um, potential competition. So you know, there's every possibility that Google might want to go and compete with, uh, with Priceline with their own offering from a, from a search and, and booking perspective. But I think okay. you know, t t to some extent, one also needs to realize that Google is a substantial beneficiary from these guys' advertising spend because they pay That's Google a lot of money. <laughs> That's so true. It's, you know, in a way, you've, you've got to you know, put yourself in Google's shoes and say, well, do we go after this market? 
and and potentially cut off you know billions of dollars worth of revenue from 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 a large player or, or do we just accept that revenue stream for a while and and, and bank it I don't, I don't know that's that's a decision we'll have to make mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily clear cut clearly uh, i want us to get a quick reminder brian clearly why we maybe like this company quite a bit online and and the the mobile uh, feature is obviously something that's quite strong there but also what the future outlook for the company uh, might entail well that's the thing you know this this is a company that internationally based. They've got a lot of their revenue is US and Europe, um, mid-teens out of the Asian market. That is their big growth strategy at the moment. They've gone into partnerships and small stakes with the C-Trip, partnerships with other players. So the, they're growing. They're looking for this to, to basically become even bigger mm -hmm. and to, to dominate the online market. Um, because once you get to that point, then yeah, you might have a little competitor, but Google goes, well, I'm getting more money from you here than I'm going to get there. So they sit tight. So at the moment, the biggest thing for them is international expansion, specifically out of the Chinese market, and then also bringing on more service providers. Um, they've got the negotiation power. They can go to the big hotel chains. Big hotel chains come to them. So that's kind of the strategy at the moment. Well, let's uh, get uh, the expert's view now on uh, whether we want to buy, hold, or sell this particular stock. Brian, uh, buy, hold, or sell? I'm personally a buyer of the company. I think it's a, a fantastic opportunity. It's very attractively priced at the moment. Um, it's one of the cheapest it's been in some time from a PE multiple. And they're growing. They're yeah. putting the growth numbers on the board. And if you're getting a company that is growing at 20% plus expected for the next couple of years on a, a forward multiple of 18, 19, I think that's quite an attractive equation. Not necessarily a retail stock, as we've said. It's <laughs> It's for the, the man on the street to go and buy it, mm. but definitely one to, to come and chat and, and pick up through your portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll explore on that getting exposure further, but uh, something you mentioned is obviously growth. So you're not buying this for the dividend then, I take it, Sean? Huh? Certainly not. No, um, the, the dividend yield is not anything to mention. Um, the, I, I would concur with the buy recommendation. That's certainly, certainly my view. Um, sub forward 20p multiples for businesses of these, with these metrics, you know, it generates a 35% operating margin, converts its earnings into cash. Um, you know, growing its top line and, and profit at, in constant currencies at a very high rate. Mm. So I think this is a great business. It's a great quality business. It throws off cash. Um, and at, this, at the same time, you've got this long-term thematic of, you know, when you look at global travel, be it air tickets, be it uh, you know, hotel accommodation, etc. In the US, you're probably sitting at close to 40% of all travel booked online in places like Asia Pacific, it's 25%. Yeah. You know, to me, those numbers are going to flip in their head in the next 10, 20 years. You'll have the majority booked online and, and the minority booked offline. So these guys are, are well-placed to take advantage of that. So and like I think it's a structural growth story. Structural growth story and one that one can get exposure to uh, via funds like the ones at Anchor Capital, I sure. presume? No, it's one of our holdings in our offshore portfolios, yeah. Yes. Perfect. Not a retail stock. I don't think I'd spend that much money on one <laughs> share, uh, <laughs> but uh, like you say, maybe through a fund it is doable. Well, that's where we leave it for this week, taking a look at Priceline Group, a buy recommendation coming through from both our guests. A big thank you to both Sean Ashton and Brian Wright from Anchor Capital. Join us again next time where we talk more stocks.